So Ember's birthday was the other day and she got her, her USB microscope. And she learned an important lesson. Whenever you get a new piece of hardware for your computer and you open the box and it comes with a CD that has software on there, what's the first thing you do? You throw that software in the garbage because it's crap. <laughs> anyway, she has been playing with her microscope and she has been loving it. And I just wanted to, uh, I know I already did a video on it, but I wanted to do a follow-up video because there were a few things that I quickly mentioned, but I wanted to go over a little more in detail. So let's go ahead and jump in and have a look at this. So we're, real quick to review, you can use any webcam software. You can use Cheese or, uh, was it G-U-C-V Viewer or something along those lines, or I prefer MPV for almost all my media stuff. And for that, you have to type MPV, AV for audio video, You're using uh, Video 4 Linux 2, uh, that's for that's drivers for video inputs on Linux. And then you have your device, which in my case is Video 0, because it's the only webcam I have. If you have more than one webcam, the number might change at the end, depending on which number the webcam is. I'll go ahead and hit enter, and there we go. Don't worry, we won't be looking up my nose again today. Uh, but here, uh, this is uh, my jeans, my blue jeans that I'm wearing. This, these are the threads. So, uh, that's simple enough, but that, that's kind of a lot to remember. Of course, it's in your history, so it's easy to search through your, your bash or whatever shell you use history. Uh, but of course, it'd be easier if you alias it. So, for example, I could be like alias, um, I call it scope equals, and then I can say this, and we'll just take that command and paste it in there. And then at any point after that, I can type in scope, and it runs that command for me. And again, here's my denim jeans. Here is the fabric on my t-shirt. Great. Um, and all you have to do is take this line right here, alias scope, or whatever you want to call it, and put it in your RC file for bash it be dot bash RC. For Z shell, it's Z dot Z shell RC, or uh, both of them you could use dot bash or Z shell RC dot local, depending on how your, your system's set up. And then anytime you start your shell, then all you have to do is type scope. I took it a step further for Ember though, because uh, let's go ahead and run scope again. Is at any point, so like I'm here looking at my denim, if I hit S, it takes a screenshot and saves it to your current directory. Well, we want all her photos taken in one spot. So let me go here. So now this screen here is on Ember's computer. So now I actually wrote her a little script under user local bin and uh, I called it scope. I have to sudo into it and oh, my password does not work. I have to type in her password. There we go. So what I actually do here is I set a directory in the home directory called scope. Uh, so we're saying that as a variable, and then I'm every time the script runs it, if that's, uh, I'm not checking if that uh, um, directory exists, but I'm trying to create it. It'd be better if I checked, if you want to be technical about it, but it tries to create that directory and then moves into it, and then it starts our MPV command, and I also added this dash dash fs so it starts full screen for her, and then when it's done, when she quits out of MPV by hitting Q, uh, she th it then starts up Thunar, which is her file browser. Uh, really, I could replace this with um, xdg-open, which would open up, and then I, I think I would do dot or whatever directory. I actually probably best if I said dir, uh, and that would open it up whatever her default um, file browser is. That'd be a better way to do it. But this is not going to go anywhere other than her computer. Uh, so what happens then is. Since it's creating that directory and moving into it, every time she takes a screenshot by hitting S on the keyboard, it saves that and then it opens up that uh, file browser to view those when she's done. Oops. So that's what I wrote up for her. Uh, so real quick, let's look at some uh, still shots that Ember and I took of an ant. So the, uh, like I said, the camera, the microscope came with a little cap so you can put things in there. And she caught an ant and she put it in there. It took us a while for the ant to stop moving and get it in the right spot. But we got some good shots and we did let the ant go afterwards and he ran off. If For those of you who are concerned about the ant, let's go ahead and look at some of those still shots. computer 
here. Uh, one of my concerns um, that I was hoping to achieve is on the microscope here, uh, everything works out of the box except for there's two red buttons, one on each side. One says zoom and one says snap. I assume the zoom was for a digital zoom because you zoom with the with the big knob here. So I assume in the software it came with the zoom button would zoom and the snap would take a snapshot. Now we just went over with MPV how to take a snapshot. Like I said with Cheese and most other webcam applications there might be a button with MPV you press S. So I was hoping to be able to map these buttons to be able to do that. So let's go ahead and have a look on how you might go about doing that. Uh, if you go under your dev folder and then input, so dev is where all your devices are. So all the hardware on your computer is listed here as files, input would be input. So I was hoping that not only would this microscope show up as a webcam, a video input, but it would show up as a HID device, a mouse or keyboard device. For example, you, you might have multiple HID devices, keyboard-like devices that aren't necessarily keyboards. For example, I have a USB uh, headset here that have controls for volume, play, and pause, and they show up as a HID device, as a keyboard, and they send the same keys as the media keys on my keyboard would, but they show up as a completely different keyboard. So under inputs, if I list here, you can see that we have a bunch of events, which most of these are going to be some sort of key, keyboard input, and then we have some mouse events. So for example, if I was to sudo cat and to cat out the raw information from this, you need to either you need to have permissions, and so I'm just going to sudo cat, and mouse one should be my main mouse here. So I did that, and you don't see anything, but if I start moving my mouse left and right, you can see, or up and down, it starts printing out raw data. And um, there's not much we can do with this here. I, I actually have plans on doing a whole uh, couple of videos, a series on input devices, enabling them, disabling them, remapping them using uh, both Python and Bash scripts. Uh, but here's just a quick little overview. So that's that was that, but how do you know which device is which? Because it's like, well, I can assume that if I just plugged in the camera, it's gonna be the last one, probably this one here. But how do I know for sure? Well, you notice there's two folders in here, by path and by ID. Let's go ahead and go inside the by ID folder. And if we list things out, now we get the devices based on their name. You can see I have some Logitech keyboards and mouse events, and then um, my microphone, uh, my headset, and then this one right here. Again, I only have one camera hooked up to my computer, so we can know this is it. Um, so what I can do now is theoretically, so just like before, I should be able to uh, cat out, pseudo cat this, and that would be, yeah, my mouse. So I move my mouse, I get that. Uh, if I list out now and I cat out, again, pseudo cat, um, this device, and I hit enter, you would think that I would be able to press those buttons and get information. Unfortunately, I'm not. So now it's gone beyond my skills. If it's not getting the raw data when those buttons are pressed, uh, and I have the correct device selected, and that is, that is the correct device because watch, if I unplug the camera now, it lost connection, and if I list things out, that device is no longer there. If I plug it back in and list the devices out, you can see it shows up again. So that's the correct device for the camera, uh, but uh, it's not seeing the button presses, unfortunately. Uh, it's not the end of the world. Again, uh, my daughter just you know holds the camera with one hand and presses S on the keyboard to take a screenshot. It would be nice to be able to click that little red button, but what can you do? Uh, so, so far that's the only thing, but in l many, many cases, uh, you would be able to access the device that way. Uh, another way you can test things out uh, is XEV, and that opens this up. So now, like, if I move my mouse over here, you can see in the shell, I'm getting output. If I click, it tells me what button I'm clicking. And now that I'm in that window, I should, theoretically, if this was showing up as a keyboard or mouse, I should be able to click these buttons and something would show up, and it doesn't. If I take my uh, USB headset and I click the um, volume up button, you can see that it detects it over there and it gives you information on, on what that button is that's being pressed. And at that point, you can use that to remap it to a script or, or whatnot, some sort of command. But right now, the camera isn't showing anything. So although it's detecting it as an input device, uh, it's just not set up through my Linux kernel, through the modules, to recognize those key presses, unfortunately. Again, very minor. Um, 
Again, S will take a screenshot on the keyboard. So, but S is, is taking a screenshot. Now, the other side, like I said, a zoom. We already zoom in and out. Let me go ahead and uh, type scope. Okay, full screen there. Uh, you zoom in and out by turning the big silver knob on the, uh, the camera itself. So like so, and I can zoom out by turning that. I would assume the zoom, I would zoom? I would assume the zoom button was for a digital zoom, which you can still do um, in MPV. Uh, to zoom out, it's alt minus. To zoom in, it's alt plus. So really on most keyboards it would be uh, alt shift plus. And again, this is a digital zoom. So the more you zoom in, just the more pixelated it's gonna be. But if for some reason you wanted to, you can hit alt shift the plus sign or alt plus sign if you, depending on how your keyboards map, but normally the plus key is the equals key. So to get the plus, you have to do shift. So it's alt shift plus, which is a little awkward. And I don't know if my daughter would be able to do that with her little hands. Um, but I don't, I'm not a big fan of digital zoom in general. Anyway, just take the screenshot and zoom in after because digital zoom is just losing quality. But if you want to, you could do that. And if we were able to get a signal from these buttons on the camera, we would have been able to remap them to that, but that's not happening. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to go over. That's pretty much it. Uh, again, just a little follow-up to a previous video, talking about some things I mentioned uh, that I wanted to go more into detail about. So thank you for watching. And as always, please visit my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the K. There's a link in the description. And as always, I hope that you have a great day.